it's a little bit over oversimplified. Uh, it's a little wizard style way of creating a connected query, but it only lets you have one parent-child relationship. And you can't do a whole lot with that. So I always go to the connected query manager, and then what I can do is I can give it a name. So um, so I'm just going to go um, GS sample uh, CC connected QRY. So fully connected query. And I can put you know comments in and that sort of thing. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to make it active. Um, this always trips me up whenever I do these, so I always do it at the beginning um, because. All of these definitions in XML Publisher, the connected query, the report definition, anything you're defining in the pages, starts out as being in process, which means you can't find it the next step down the process. So if I don't actually make this active, um, and I just save it, and then I move on to try to create an XML Publisher report against this query, it's not going to find it. And I, I usually go, well, wait a minute. I remember creating this connected query. So by default, I just set it as active. Um, I, I, Parent query, again, I'll start with my XMLP to do my search, and I'm going to get this department manager XMLP one. So that's my parent query. Now, the key thing is the parent query drives a lot of functionality in XML Publisher. Um, because in XML Publisher, there's a lot of requirements in terms of the topmost part of the XML that's, that's fed to it. So again, a connected query just, just, just gets processed, and all the query data gets generated as an XML document under the covers, and that gets fed into XML Publisher. So what we're doing here is anything that's in this, this uh, top query can be used for bursting. So I can use that, but it has to be in the top query. So I can go through and say, all right, you know, for bursting, I want a route output based on the employee ID um, or the operator ID uh, that's in here and link that to who it needs to go. So, um, and so we'll show that when we get to the bursting piece. The other thing is that you can actually use data in this top query to switch what the template looks like when you run it. So, um, so you can go through, and this can be used for multilingual purposes. So I may go through and say, all right, anything that's, um, you know, great, it's all English, but if it's Canadian English, you know, I want to have this layout. If it's not Canadian English, I want to have the other one. Or if it's a different business unit, I may need to have a different layout for different things, different countries in payroll or HR, and have different fields where data is or different requirements in terms of what has to be reported. So you can actually switch the layout, the template file that's used to do the formatting. So let's move on. So I create, added my top query. So now I need to insert a child query. Because of course, you know, the, the whole point of this is to, is to do that. So I've done. So what I want to do is link my employees to their department. So I have the two queries. Now I have to start mapping the fields to each other. And so that's where I start going through and doing the select related fields. And so what I want to do is the child query has a department ID. The parent query has a department ID. So by clicking on that. I'm actually uh, doing that right there. So I can click map fields. So now I've actually done my linkage between the two queries. So what happens is every time I get a row with a specific department ID when I run the parent query under the covers, it's going to go and select everything for the child query uh, for that department and include that. So that's the first step. I want to put another child query in as well. I'm going to go multiple levels deep. And the nice thing is you can go as deep as you want with your connected query. And if you don't use it all in your XML publisher report, it doesn't really matter, So, uh, so which is kind of nice. So I'm going to go in and select this one. And again, I need to map my fields. And so what I want to do here is let's also bring the department ID down. Um, and then let's go through and I want to map the ample ID with the ample ID above it. So I'm mapping those two pieces, click map fields, and now I can actually save my XML publisher or uh, my connected query. 
So this actually has all of those things pulled together, and now I can start creating my XML report against this connected query. So let's go through and start doing that. So, so I have this saved on GS Depth Manager or uh, GS Empl C Query. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to XML Publisher, and I'm going to create a report definition. So we're going to call this GS. Um, I don't know. Uh, Web Ample. And we're going to use a connected query for this. And let's take a look at the GS connected queries I have out there. So here it is, GS Ample connected query. And now I click Add. So I have all of that together. And I can go through, and I'll finish creating all of this later. But the first thing I want to do, again, if I'm going to design my report, is that I want to be able to take this sample data file and you know use it, pull it down to the client. So that's going to have the structure of my connected query. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click Save File. And so basically, this has gone through, pulled that in there. So so what I'm going to do now is find a place where I want to put it locally. One of the things that I always do when I build XML publisher reports is I always uh, let's do this. So I always put it in a uh, in into a version control structure so I can kind of deal with that. So in this circumstance, I was playing around before uh, before we're, before we uh, got on the webinar. So I actually don't need this folder. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to create a new folder for the report that I'm creating. I'm going to do new folder, and let's give it the same name as this report that I'm doing. So again, I can put everything that I'm working with together. So I got that. So now that I have that structure there, what I can do here, I can take this file, just drop it right here. So now I have my XML file here. So if I change my connected query in the future, I can actually go through and you know, save off a new copy of this and do diffs across my connected queries because I'm using uh, subversion right here to actually go through and do all of that. So now that I've got that there, let's create my first report. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to open up Word. So here I am in Word. And so one of the things that I've done is I have this add-in here for XML Publisher. So you can see that there's these menus here that show up as part of that to actually work with this. So this is the one that comes with PeopleSoft. There's also a separate menu that comes in that's more BI Publisher related, um, which really doesn't, isn't related to what we're doing for, for this. So I want to use this one. And if you notice, there's this little menu item for load XML data. The reason that we have to do this is we have to tell the plugin what the data structure looks like in the PeopleSoft system that it's going to be working with. So. Um, so here's the load XML data, and so uh, which is this, this error is fine. I just deleted that folder, if you remember. So what I can do is go here, and so one one of the things just to keep in mind, because uh, I've been talking a lot about connected query, um, is that connected query is actually something that came with People Tools eight four nine. So as long as you're up on People Tools eight four nine or greater. You can use connected query as part of defining your XML publisher reports. The first version with XML publisher was 848. It didn't have connected query, so uh, so there were some limitations that people had found. Uh, but so uh, that's where that came in, which I think was a great idea to put that in. So I double click this, and it says now that my data was loaded successfully. And so what that means is that now it understands um, what my connected query looks like. So I can actually go in, if I want to go click on uh, Show Field, which should be doing, uh, all right, click Insert, we'll do, uh, instead we'll do the Table Wizard instead. So pull up the 
table lizard. Every once in a while, this dialog doesn't pop up. Um, so it's just, you know, one of those things where um, I'm sure if any of you have used Envision before, I'm sure nobody has ever seen uh, Envision have an issue where dialogues don't pop up properly or that sort of thing. Because I'm being facetious here. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick form here. So this wizard helps me go through and create it. And if you're doing uh, XML Publisher for the first time, the wizard's nice because it creates a lot of the structure automatically for you. And you can learn kind of what all of those pieces are. And you can create those on your own the next time through. And there's, you know, like I said, I mean, there's lots of uh, resources available for XML Publisher because this part is not PeopleSoft specific. Uh, so I'm going to go in and click Form. One of the things you'll notice is that it understands the three levels of my connected query because that's the sample XML file that's sent down. It has that in there. So I can go in here and I can pick which, which data set I want. So I'm going to start at the top level. And what I'm going to do, and here are all the fields that were in my query, the top level query. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and maybe I'll put in person's name, um, and then their offer depth and description. And maybe I also want the department ID as well to, to be displayed and the description. So maybe these are the things that I want to pull in here. So I click on Next. And so now if I want to sort on it, why don't we sort by the name as well? Because I'm going to be bursting eventually by that. So it would be nice to put everything together related to a, a given individual. And then maybe I also want to sort by department ID after that. And then I can say, I can give it a name, so or give it a label, so name. Maybe I'll leave the, that one blank. Uh, so. We'll put all of that in there. So now if I click Finish, you'll notice that it's gone through and it inserted a table in here with all of that information in there. And so you can actually see all of that information right there. The other thing to keep in mind is it created a repeating section for me automatically. So I could actually go in and say create a repeating group and then put things in you know, manually. But the wizard did all of that for me. And if I decided that I don't like the formatting, everybody should know how to reformat things in Word. So you know, I could go in here, change the font, change all sorts of other things as well. 